And welcome back, everybody. It's halftime, and it's time for our Bulldog Conversation. Brad Radisi here with you, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Chuck Stokes, an assistant professor of sociology here at Sanford. And Chuck, Jan Term is on the horizon. I know you have a very exciting course you'll be teaching. It involves really one of America's icons. Right. This Jan Term, uh, this will be the second Jan Term this class has been taught. We have the Sociology of Disney, Behind the Magic. It's an online course, but that middle week of Jan Term, we'll be headed down to Walt Disney World. Uh, it was a lot of fun last year, and we're looking forward to it again. There are a lot of companies you could you could pick out there. Why, why Disney? What brought that to, to your mind? Yeah, well, I mean, one thing is we were trying to, just as a faculty, trying to think about interesting and catchy Jan Term courses, and obviously mm-hmm. Disney uh, is fun to think right. about. Um, but also, I really noticed, in, in a way, um, how important Disney was in the imaginations of my students. Students grew up wanting to be Disney princesses or Disney heroes. Disney has ESPN, which is, you know, for a lot of, for the young men, that's mm-hmm. a big part of their lives. Um, ABC, uh, they have the, from the very beginning, Disney Junior, then the Disney Channel. It's just incredibly influential. And so I thought it would be good to take a social scientific look at this company that really uh, impacts the lives of our students so greatly. And the course is broken down pretty interestingly. It's a little bit of online and it's a little bit on site. Just just give me a, a breakdown of what happens that first week. Yeah, so in the first week, students are uh, listening to lectures that have PowerPoints online, and they're also working on their own paper where they're doing research on the history of the Disney company and then watching uh, a feature film from each of the decades Disney has been in operation, so all going all the way back to Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in wow. the 30s. And then they write a paper based on that. But that, that first week is all about acquainting ourselves with Walt Disney and also learning some of the social scientific tools that we'll then apply when we go to the Walt Disney World in that second week. And that second week, you just mentioned it. That, that, that's, that's the fun part of the week, isn't it? You guys get to go down to the park. And, and, and what, what all do you do? Is it just re- uh, relegated to the Magic Kingdom? Do you do all four parks? How does it work for you? Yeah, well, last year we, uh, we did do all four parks, and, and it was a bit of a hustle. Mm-hmm. So this year we're going to back off a little bit. Um, we're only going to do three days where we're all in the parks, and then there's going to be a fourth day where the students will kind of get to choose where they want to go. So obviously we won't get all four in. Right. But we'll definitely do Magic Kingdom and Epcot, uh, and I'm a little up in the air about right. whether to do Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom for the fourth. But while we're there... Um, we take those lessons that we learned from that first week and try to be curious, basically. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we sort of, our two watchwords are be curious and be courteous because right. there are other guests and the folks who are the staff there, they're working. But when you catch them at a moment when you can say, hey, tell me about your job, what do you do, what are you looking for, those kinds of things. And also, we have a great uh, Sanford alum who works at Disney in their guest relations department. She worked with us last year and hopefully will be able to help us out this year as well, kind of giving us some uh, behind the scenes, uh, her perspective working with Disney and how much she's enjoyed it, what the challenges are. And then this year we're going to add, hopefully, if it, if it works out, one of the underground tours where you actually do go underground at the Magic Kingdom and, and see how everything works really behind the scenes. Great. That sounds pretty fun, actually. So so you, you, you're on site, you, you do papers, and you guys come back and you break it all down. Just having done it a year, and, and what is the influence of Disney? Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that was so interesting that came out from last year is how uh, how much it dominates the thought life in something like, for instance, how students think about romance. Mm-hmm. Like how many of their ideas about what is normal in a romantic relationship even come from Disney and mm-hmm. the sort of scripts that come from those movies or especially from the kind of teen dramas that are produced on the Disney Channel. And another interesting thing that came out was a, a contrast between the media product, what Disney puts out, um, you know, on the Disney Channel and the movies and so on, and the commercialism behind that, right? There's always a product mm-hmm. to sell. And then contrasting that with the experience at Walt Disney World, where what we noticed was they actually, I mean, while, while you could spend a lot of money at Disney World, there was a lot of experience there that was just value added. Like, mm-hmm. they even, there were times when they could have monetized something and they didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, that was uh, surprising to me and um, comforting in a way to learn, you know, there is something about Walt Disney's original vision of a place where kids and parents could play together that really still animates that place. 
Well, it sounds like an exciting trip and, and a wonderful class. Uh, I know you guys are going to have a lot of fun, and if you guys want to get on it next year, be sure to drop uh, Chuck Stokes an email. All right, folks, that's it for our Bulldog conversation. We'll get you back to the action right after this. You're listening to the Alabama Power Halftime Show right here on the Sanford Sports Network. <laughs> 